Hey everyone, I thought I'd start my video today outside seeing as I'm just walking to go get my hair cut. You can see it's really long, haven't had it cut for five months now. Ooh. Ooh. Haircut done. A lot, lot better. Alright, let's get to the video. So guys, what is creative? You've heard me talk about it in lots of my other videos, but what exactly is it and why is it so important? Let's get into it. So creatinine is a waste product that's produced inside our bodies and it's produced from the natural breakdown of the muscles inside us. So every day our muscles naturally break down and this causes a waste product called creatinine. This creatinine ends up in your bloodstream where then it's sent through to your kidneys to be filtered out. Naturally, a, very, uh, a healthy kidney should get rid of up to 95% of creatinine. However, with a kidney transplant, um, as a kidney transplant patient, and previously, whilst I was suffering from lupus, my kidneys weren't working properly enough and they weren't able to get rid of up to 95% of this creatinine. So what happens is, you end up with more creatinine in your bloodstream, and this is a really good indicator to show you how well your kidneys are filtering out all the toxins and all the things that it doesn't really need. So how much creatinine should you have in your body after it's been filtered through your kidneys? Well, it depends. It's quite, there's quite a lot of different characteristics that determine the correct level of creatinine for you, but in general, it's down to your, your age, your gender, your size, ethnicity, and a few other things as well. But what I've been told and what I've been trying to follow is anywhere between 60 and 120 micromoles of creatinine per litre of blood is the correct range to be in. So what does that mean? Well, a micromole is a very, very small unit of measurement. It's used to measure a substance like creatinine in your blood. And for every one litre of blood, you should have between 60 and 120 micromoles of creatinine. So if you can keep it in between that range, then that's great. That means that your kidneys are working as they should be and you shouldn't have any renal problems. However, since my transplant, my, cre my creatinine has been high and it's been up to about 170, um, which for some people after a kidney transplant is act actually great. I've heard some stories already that people are living the rest of their life with their transplanted kidney with a creatinine range of 150 to 200. However, because of the kidney that I got from my uh, younger brother was in a really, really good state and before the transplant, his creatinine was down in the 90s. So what that told the doctors is that the kidney that I was taking from him or being given from him is that it can it can work with a 90 creatinine. And in the week after my transplant, I did get down to creatinine of 90. So when it gets higher than 120, 130, 140, for me personally, that leads to an issue. So that's why I've had to start my steroids again. And since then, it has dropped slowly and slowly. Right now, it's down to 117. So we're almost where I want it to be. And for you, it could be completely different, but that's completely between you and your doctors and how you've worked it out for yourself. So if like me, you've been struggling with high creatinine for any reason, it doesn't necessarily transpire itself into an illness and it doesn't lead to any negative side effects like headaches or aches and pains or anything like that. But what it does do, as I said, it's a great indication of just how your kidneys are working. So if there is too much creatinine in your bloodstream, what it means is that your kidneys haven't got rid of it. And if your kidneys aren't getting rid of your creatinine, they may be impaired in other ways as well. So if you have got extra, extra creatinine in your blood, it just means that your kidneys aren't working properly and you probably need to get that sorted. So moving on, let's talk about now what causes a spike in your creatinine. So there are lots of different things that can cause a spike in your creatinine. The one thing that I've felt in the past and currently as well that creates spikes more than anything else is stress. Now, stress is quite a hard thing to, gr to grasp. So you can't really turn off your stress. If it was that easy, we would all be stress-free. But what I have seen and experienced in the past is when there are other things going on and things that are on your mind and stressing you out, your creatinine just rises naturally. You can't do much about it. It probably links to everything else that's happening inside your body as well. I'm sure that when you're stressed, your blood pressure is worse off, your hydration levels are worse off, and it naturally just means that your creatinine levels will also be worse off. So, if I could give you one piece of advice, and it's probably not going to be easy to follow, but if you're feeling stressed, try your best to de-stress yourself in some way so that your creatinine doesn't rise too high. And you'll see 
if yourself or someone else you know is going through this process, you'll see when there's a spike in your creatinine, and if you then think about it and you sit down and you think, right, what's been going on in my life? There may be a reason that's stressing you out and then that correlates to your spike in your creatinine. So find things that just calm you down, relax you. If you like to go for walks, like go for a run, reading books, watching movies, whatever it is, try your best to get rid of the stress that's um, stressing you out just so that you can keep calm and look after your kidney as best as you can. And another thing that causes creatinine spikes is dehydration. So I suffered from a creatinine spike straight after my transplant um, and I was back in uh, a week or so after my transplant to have um, some more medicine. And the reason that I was um, having a spike in my creatinine is because I was really dehydrated. And it wasn't because I wasn't drinking enough, I was drinking about four liters a day, but because I was using the toilet more often, my body wasn't actually absorbing the water and my kidneys weren't concentrating it enough to dilute my body. So I ended up being becoming dehydrated, which means the kidney starts to work overdrive to try and compensate and pump water back into your system. And then that bumps up your creatinine. So another piece of advice, you have to drink as much water as you can to keep your body hydrated. Some of you uh, may be on some um, liquid restrictions, which I've heard of before. I'm not, so I'm having to drink as much as I can. And I'm trying to get to four and a half to five liters a day. It is pretty tricky to get that much, especially if you're not thirsty or especially if you've drunk enough throughout the day already, you just don't want to have to drink more, but it's really, really important you try. So keep yourself hydrated. Uh, make sure that when you're using the toilet, the, the color of your urine is correct. It should be nice and clear. If it's yellow at all, that means you are dehydrated and that your kidneys aren't working as most uh, as efficiently as they should. So you have to keep an eye on that as well. And the last thing I want to talk about that may cause a spike in your creatinine are any viruses or any infections that might um, affect your kidney in any way. So obviously a virus or an infection, it's never a good thing. It causes lots of uh, negative effects in your body and it causes your body's uh, natural defense systems to kick into the gear and lots of different hormones and lots of different things floating around in your body. So if for some reason after your transplant you end up um, picking up an infection or some sort of virus, your kidney and your uh, immune system then has to come together and try and fight it off. And of course, once your kidney is trying its best to fight off the virus, it's going to struggle to um, to regulate any of the water in your body and to regulate how much creatinine is being cleaned. So nothing's going to be working efficiently enough. Now, you don't have much choice whether you um, contract a virus or not. You can look after yourself as much as you can, but sometimes you just get them anyway. But after your transplant, or after my transplant, I should say, I'm on lots of different um, medicines to help try and stop that as well. So I'm going to be on antiviral medicines for six months, um, antibiotic medicines for six months, all just in case I pick up a virus or an infection. So try your best to look after yourself, but of course you don't have too much control over that, but you can do all the things that you should be doing anyway, just to make sure you don't fall ill. So guys, that is creatinine. I hope I haven't confused some of you in my past videos by talking about it so much, but it is very, very important. It's very important for a transplant patient and it's very important for any renal patients as well, just those who have issues with their kidneys because it's something that tells you instantly how your kidneys are working and it's just from a simple blood test. You don't have to make any special accommodations. It's just a simple blood test that you'd have every week when you go to the hospital and you can get your results in three or four hours and you know exactly how well your kidneys are working. It's definitely the one result I look out for on my phone as soon as I've had my blood test because it can make your week. It can make your week, uh, it can make your week good, but it can also make your week bad if it's not in the right range where you need it to be. So let's just recap very quickly before we finish. So creatinine is a waste product produced in your body from the breakdown of your muscles. It then ends up in your bloodstream where it's filtered through your kidneys and it should, or your, your, your kidneys should get rid of 95% of the creatinine. If you have any issues, any renal issues or any problems with your kidneys, it won't get rid of that much. So it ends up back in your bloodstream where then you can take your blood test and see how much creatinine you have left. A regular healthy kidney or set of kidneys should have between 60 and 120 uh, micromoles of creatinine per one liter of blood. But if you are a transplant patient or you know someone that's a transplant patient and you know they're monitoring their creatinine as well, it could be a completely different number. So mine's needs to be between 90 and 100 for me to work at my optimum. But like I said, someone else's could be 150, 160, 170, maybe even as high as 200. So it's completely dependent on the individual. And they can still be living a healthy life with a full uh, renal function, even with a creatinine of 200. So it completely depends. 
So I hope that's cleared everything up for you guys. I hope you understand a bit more about Kriatnin so that I won't uh, confuse you the next time I talk about it in my videos. Uh, if you did like this video at any point, leave me a thumbs up. Uh, if you've got a question for me, write it in the comment section down below and I'll try and answer it for you. And please subscribe to my channel and check out all the other videos on my channel. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video.